Where are we today, Mark? I believe we're at Richmond Beach Park in Shoreline. That is indeed the Puget Sound out there. Do you say Puget Sound? Puget Sound. Puget Sound. Californians call it Puget Sound. Uh -huh. We're at Richmond Beach Park, as Mark says, and we're uh, now in the month of June, and our first video was in October. And uh, the sun just came up. It's been raining as usual in Seattle. Anyway, the topic of this short video is our second session devoted to definitions. So we already talked about the importance of definitions in reasoning. If we are reasoning with each other and we haven't defined our terms properly, we won't know what we're talking about, or at least we won't agree on what we're talking about. And sometimes when you're arguing and you know what you're talking about, there may be a key term where one person's using it in one direction with one meaning and somebody else is meaning something subtly different. And you end up getting these situations where people want to dismiss the whole conversation as merely semantics. That's, well, that's what they call there's it, actually yeah. something substantive going on there. They just need to calm down and realize they're using one word but using it two different ways. And mm -hmm. we can resolve that. But it mm -hmm. takes understanding how definitions work. Yes, and sometimes we use the term verbal disagreement. Yeah. We say people are having a verbal disagreement when the disagreement is due to one person meaning one thing by a word and another person meaning another thing by a word. And actually, with a verbal disagreement, they don't, they don't disagree on some substantive matter. They just right. disagree on the meaning of a word. In a, in, in a real disagreement, they don't, it's not just that they disagree on the meaning of a word, that may not even be part of it, it's that they disagree on a fact of the matter. Yeah. So someone might believe that... Uh, uh, someone could say, uh, I believe that God exists. And you could say God doesn't exist. Until we be, are really sure we're both meaning the same kind of thing by God, it could be where I would actually agree. If I think God is Zeus, this kind of limited being, you might say, no, God doesn't exist in that sense. You it's a good have, example. You might have a different kind of concept of God. That happens a lot in philosophical theology. People need to just kind of get clear on what they mean by God, what they mean by religious experience, and then the conversation can move forward in a rational way. That's a very good example. So if you mean one thing by God and I mean another thing by God, and that's why we're not agreeing, that's a verbal disagreement. Yeah. But if we agree on the definition of God, so we agree on what we're talking about, mm -hmm and you say God does exists and I say God does not exist, that's a real disagreement. We're disagreeing on the facts of the matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we have a disagreement that's verbal, what we need is a good definition. And that's what rational, thoughtful people can do. They have a conversation, settle it out, and this is what we need to learn. Okay. So definitions are important. If we don't define our words properly, we, we won't be able to reason effectively. And that's why definition is part of the art of logic. So we've already defined uh, the different types of definitions, and uh, let's just remind ourselves of some of them. We've got stipulative definitions that stipulate a new meaning for a word from scratch. Like if I invent a new kind of television set that goes on my wrist, I could call it a Ristovision. Sure. I'm just simply making up a word to describe this new gizmo I make. Okay, a Ristovision. Or the word hacker, the computer term, was invented brand new yeah. to refer to people that break into other people's software. If I discover a new animal, I might assign it a new name. That would be stipulated be that stipulated new animal definition. would be called such and such. Mm -hmm. And we have theoretical definitions whose purposes are to def to explain the meaning, excuse me, explain the nature of something. For instance, uh, in the 1870s, a new definition of light wave, of light came into being when Maxwell discovered that light is actually an electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. It's an electric and a magnetic field oscillating through mm -hmm. space. So light is now defined as an electro, electric field and a magnetic field working together, oscillating through space. People, That's a theoretical definition. People at that time would certainly know what light is in some general, haphazard, practical, everyday way. But there was more theoretical to have a deeper understanding of what the thing actually is. And that's something we may not always need in everyday life. If I need to know that there's, I need more light in the room, I don't really need to be able to define it with a theoretical definition. But right. sometimes I do need a theoretical definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. So we have theoretical stipulative. Of course, the lexical definition is simply the dictionary definition that expresses the common meaning that we all attach to a word or phrase. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a precising definition, which is a definition that tries to make the meaning of a word more exact for so that we know exactly what it applies to. For a given context. For, so, for instance, if someone says rich people should pay more taxes, the question arises, how do you define rich? And we all know generally what rich means, but in the context of this particular claim or this particular social policy, we would want to have a precise definition of what it meant to be rich. A net income of over 500000 a year or something, something like along that. those lines. Yeah. So the, and, and one of the purposes of a precising definition is to avoid uh, what we call, um, my mind just went blank. Well, there's uh, be a certain amount of ambiguity. If well, it avoids ambiguity, but it avoids uh, vagueness. But it avoids okay. uh, yeah. cases where we're not yeah. sure whether the word applies or not. Yeah. So someone who makes 250000 a year, is that person rich and should they be taxed more? Uh, is that what's intended by the claim that the rich should pay more taxes? We call a case where, a wor where we're not sure whether a word applies or not, we call it a borderline case. Yeah. That was what I was yeah, what reaching be for. Vague, vague more than ambiguous. Yeah, so a precising definition tries to narrow down the meaning of a word so that it removes borderline cases, cases where we're not sure whether the word applies or not. That we, if we define rich as $500,000 a year or more in income, then it's a very exact meaning. Now we don't have borderline cases. Yeah. Either this person is rich or they're not. And it's going to apply in this particular context, because the word rich might be greater than $5,000 a year, which would be incredible wealth compared to some other people in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So you know, precising definitions give a generally understood word a precise meaning in a given particular in a context. Given con so in the context of, monet uh, of uh, tax policy mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. or in the state of Washington, we might define something more precisely for that context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Suppose I define um, rock music, and I say, well, rock and roll music is music that has either a 4-4 beat or a 2-4 beat, and it's performed with either guitars and drums, or guitars, drums, and organ, and I'm defining rock music in this way. Look, uh, what kind of definition, precising, stipulative, lexical, do you think I'm attempting? It's sounding like a oh, kind of a lexical definition. You're trying to provide a, uh, it's not a precising definition, because you're not saying in this particular context, this is what we're meaning by rock and roll. Um, it could be theoretical. I'm just trying to ask myself, is this the kind of definition that most people would understand if they're just kind of walking the streets? So that's what a lexical mm -hmm. definition does, gives a meaning mm -hmm. that would be found in a dictionary. And dictionaries in the U.S. attempt to find the common meaning. Um, I'm not sure most people would do that. I'm not thinking you'd be aiming for a theoretical definition, trying to give some kind of understanding of what rock and roll would be. What are you intending? Yeah, I think it's, I, I think it's more of a lexical definition okay. than a theoretical. But it has elements of theory in it. Yeah. So some things, some fairly simple things like rock and roll or squares, as far as that go, they may have theoretical definitions that are the same as the lexical because it's so easy to understand what it is. People on the streets and dictionaries will actually do a pretty good job of uh, handling it. Where a uh, lexical definition and a theoretical de definition might diverge would be when you're dealing with more complex topics like justice mm -hmm. or electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. Well. If you ask somebody, you know, how a magnet works, what, how electromagnetism works, they probably have a fairly surface workable definition that would probably be lexical. But if I want a, really a theoretical understanding of what it means to be just or A to deeper have, understanding. It'll probably be more of a complex thing. And maybe rock and roll is simple enough that a lexical definition would be pretty darn close to a theoretical definition. It's mm -hmm. possible. It's, it's going to be. Well, how about this definition? Suppose I'm defining justice, and I define justice as a state of affairs in which every human being has an equal opportunity to flourish. Well, this is starting to sound like a theoretical definition. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a theoretical. I doubt if you're going to get that on the street. It wouldn't be a lexical because no. it's not the common meaning. No, it's not a common we meaning. We disagree on the meaning of justice. Yeah. So I, I would call that a theoretical yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. So uh, How about this one? Um, for the, I want to define the word uh, 
drunk, inebriated. Mm -hmm. In the context of driving, you are inebriated if you have a 0 .08 alcohol level. Ah, good example. And that's a good example of a stipulative definition. Excuse me, precising definition. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making that face. <laughs> it's a good example of a precising <laughs> definition. And, yeah. and the law oftentimes needs precising definitions so that officer knows exactly when you can be arrested and when you can't. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's, uh, let's wrap that up and uh, then let's do another one on intentional and extensional definitions, Defin definitional techniques. How's that? Okay.